Hello, hello, this is Tom Sapp, Tom Sapp Photography. How to take a better photograph is what we're going to talk about today. Now, there is a, an abundance of information that I could give you on how to take a better photograph. First, I would really need to see the photograph in terms of how to make it better, but you learn in school and what they teach you is that there's no such thing as a perfect image. There's always something that, especially if you're the creator, there's something you're going to point out that says, well, I wish I would have done it this way, I wish I would have done this. Um, somebody else might look at it and go, wow, that's perfect. You know, I see pictures all the time that just blow my mind that photographers are doing now. Um, and I, and I, I'm like, you know, how'd you do that? What'd you do? And I've been doing this a long time, so it's, it's, you're constantly learning. You're never, ever, ever going to get to a point where you know everything in photography. That's the beauty of this, this hobby or this profession. Um, now, I have a little bit of a recipe. I teach photography on occasion, and um, I've got a recipe that I tell people for how to get a really beautiful photograph. And if you're having trouble behind the camera getting a good exposure um, or just a good image in general, maybe good color, it could be a various things. But I've got a recipe that is really good for um, just helping you through your troubles while you're on the camera, while you've got that camera in there, and while you're shooting. Um, it's real simple. It's four things. It's one, you just basically list out the parts of the camera. You've got the aperture. You got the shutter speed, you got the ISO, and you got the white balance. In that order is the most important thing. Um, if that's the if the aperture is the primary, what I like to do is basically um, look at the aperture and say, how much do I need in focus? Am I shooting a group of a family of maybe 40, 30, you know, 30, 40 people, um, or am I shooting an individual one person? Is it a low light situation, or is it a bright light situation? Those are the two things that go into play when I'm, I'm using aperture for the most part with what I do. Everybody's in different, uh, different genres of photography. You'd be dealing in different situations. Commercial photography, obviously, you would be at the opposite end of the spectrum. Do you want everything in focus? Do you want a lot of light or do you just need like a little bit of light? So, but that's all, all those things that go into play, whether it's aperture, shutter speed, ISO, or white balance, they all deal with getting the right light, getting the light right inside the camera. So you've got aperture that deals with depth of field and adjusting the amount of light. We've got shutter speed that deals with showing motion um, and the amount of light that's being captured. And we've got ISO that deals with your actual quality that you're capturing, how much detail. And when you go up in the ISO, say 6400, 800, um, 200 is going to give you the most detail if you go up from that point just to 800, 400, 1600. What you're doing in that situation is basically dumping your information in your black areas. Anything that's mid-tone, 18% gray, to the darker um, tones, maybe black. Uh, what you're going to do there is just say that information is gone. It has a, a lot to do, um, uh, for instance, a lot in relation with film. After you were developing film, after the first two minutes, your highlights would be there. After the, the, the first two minutes, um, you would be developing in your shadows. So most exposures, most uh, developed times were seven minutes. And the same thing applies with ISO with digital, digital cameras. What you're doing when you go up, basically, is you're dumping your, your black information just like you would if you were uh, cutting your exposure time when you were developing your film. So if you're a film guy, that might make some sense to you. If not, you just got to keep in, my, in, in, in mind that when you go up, up, up an ISO, you're dealing with the amount of light you're capturing. Obviously, you can capture um, in, in a lot lower light situations, the higher the ISO. But the, the trick is, and the downside to that is, you're going to be dumping your information in your black areas, and you're going to get some grain in that area. Those four things that I just told you, the, the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, and the white balance, um, if you do them in that order, if you get to one, you hit a roadblock, you simply go back to the beginning. And what I mean by that is if you get um, to where you can't go down in, in your, your, um, your ISO, say you're at 200, uh, you can always go back to your aperture and adjust that and then go to shutter speed and then come back to the ISO and then go to white balance as the final one to get the correct color at the end. But that, that um, recipe right there should help you a little bit. And uh, I, I appreciate your time. This is Tom Sapp, How to Get a Better Photograph.